Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just want to bring this to your attention, this article from the 27th of October from the ABC in Australia. Hale survives two weeks of heat buried in outback Queensland property. More than a fortnight since a hailstorm swept through central Queensland, a farmer was surprised to discover the ice on parts of his property had still not melted. Cattle producer Jack Walker found hailstones buried under dirt and debris on the outskirts of his farm near Theodore after the storm on October the 11th. We noticed the hail wasn't melting, so we've watched the hail and two weeks later it's still there in places. We were just thinking, wow, I haven't had a, an esky that good that I can put ice in and keep it for two weeks. Mr Walker said the mess of debris and ice had knocked down his flood fences as it swept several kilometres from the mountains down a creek. So there it goes. Since then, the region has experienced hot and sunny weather with temperatures reaching close to 40 degrees Celsius. It doesn't seem to matter if it's in full sun or partly shaded. There's still hail there, Mr Walker said. Bureau of Meteorology uh, forecaster Dean Narramore said the mel slow melting ice was an unusual phenomenon. It's a pretty impressive event. It's pretty rare, but it does happen occasionally, he said. He said it happened when large volumes of hail accumulated on creek or river banks, allowing the ice to clump together and mix with other debris. The debris protects it from the heat. Wow. And amazingly, it almost acts like a fridge or a freezer where you close the door and it keeps the cold in. It can take quite a few weeks, which is amazing in the 40 degrees heat to slowly melt out. The hailstorm also broke windows and fly screens at Mr Walker's house and damaged a car, although the hail immediately around his house melted within a day. There's a lot of dead birds around, dead snakes, rabbits, some kangaroos and things like that. The normal event of a hailstorm, Mr Walker said. The farmer said he was finding novel ways to make the most of the long-lasting hailstones. I actually put a pretty flash bottle of champagne there, but my wife said we're not allowed to drink that until we get decent rain to celebrate properly. So uh, this came uh, courtesy of uh, Dane Wigington in his uh, in his report uh, yesterday. Um, so I'm just going to extract a few comments that he has made about this and about weather down under in Australia in general. This report goes on and on. Now, about this material, this endothermic reacting chemical ice nucleation material, this headline from Down Under, Hail survives two weeks of heat buried in outback Queensland property. For two weeks, in temperatures nearly 40 degrees Celsius, which is about 104, 105 degrees Fahrenheit, hail remained frozen. How in the world is that possible? And again, it's from the endothermic reacting materials that I just mentioned. Let me provide a little more science detail on these materials. This excerpt from a patent filed in 1966 titled Weather Modification Method. This patent you can find at geoengineerwatch.org. Search geoengineerwatch.org Nolenberg patent. From the a patent, the assignee of the United States of America is represented by the director of the National Science Foundation for Weather Modification. Another excerpt, the present invention provides a method for producing rain or snow with endothermic seeding agents, potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, and other elements effective in producing ice crystals and a vapor cloud having temperatures as high as six degrees C positive. This long and detailed patent goes on to describe other elements used for chemical ice nucleation, such as synthetic urea, one of the elements that has showed up in testing, in frozen precipitation. And this is what the patent states about that 
endothermic reacting element. Thermochemical calculations based on the solubility of urea and its heat solution indicate that urea can nucleate a cloud with temperatures of 18 degrees C. That's 64 degrees Fahrenheit. How many people understand that these processes exist and are being used to create engineered winter weather events, highly toxic frozen precipitation that doesn't behave as snow once did before it was completely contaminated with these processes. But this is another reason why we have such massive hailstones now. And we have ice balls in Lake Michigan, perfectly spherical ice balls lighting the shore that somehow formed in water that was 45 degrees. These elements are being used. It's a massive part of climate engineering operations. Again, search the engineering winter section at geoengineeringwatch.org. And for anyone, any site, any source, any individual who claims to be in the fight to expose and halt climate engineering, if you are not addressing the completely engineered cool downs, if you're calling them anything but engineered, you are helping to cover the tracks of the climate engineers. Let me take a moment and cover an ice nucleation patent. And this ice nucleating materials are endothermic reacting materials. Many people know what exothermic reacting materials are. Things that make bombs are exothermic reacting materials. You have an energy release. Endothermic reacting materials absorb energy. Just like the first aid kit that might sit on your shelf for 20 years at room temperature, you mix those endothermic reacting chemicals together, energy absorbing chemicals, and you have ice. These endothermic materials do not make conventional frozen precipitation. Thus, you have much of this quote unquote snow that's created by this tends to sublimate. What does that mean? It means that it, like dry ice, which is a non-natural material, it converts from a solid to a gas and bypasses much of the liquid phase. That's why many of these snow piles don't have much runoff coming off them. And that's why they also stay frozen at temperatures far above freezing. And many people thankfully finally are starting to take notice of that, a headline on that in just a moment. But again, as this whole scenario glues together, including the cools down, cool downs in the central U.S. and sources like the LA Times acknowledging this, the warmer Alaska, balmy warm Alaska, high pressure over the west, spinning clockwise, pushing warmer moisture through Alaska. We have this headline from Weather Underground last week. Alaska turns strangely warm while much of the nation shivers. Never see that acknowledgement. Warm Alaska, warm Arctic, while the U.S. lower 48 gets the engineered cool down. How much warmer in Alaska? The report states up to 30 degrees above average. Similar report from ABC Alaska. Confirmation of Alaska's record warm temperatures. Record high temperature for Anchorage. Locations across the southern portion of the state broke or tied record highs. This report goes on and on. Now, about this material, this endothermic reacting chemical ice nucleation material. This headline from Down Under. Hail survives um, yeah, I've heard of pollen uh, triggering asthma, uh, but this is a new one on me. So uh, it's saying the health department upgraded its up thunderstorm asthma warning to moderate for uh, Friday in the state's central, north central, and northern country, Millie and northwest districts. The asthma is. Warning is high for the Wimera region, while the rest of the state is at a low risk. The thunderstorm asthma risk is set to return to low across the state on Sunday. So perhaps that's something I should be looking at. Um, yeah, it's a new one on me, as I say. Um, and then uh, there's this from The Guardian. Hundreds of koalas feared burnt alive and out of control bushfire near Port Macquarie, the blaze around Lake Innes and Lake Cathy in northern New South Wales has destroyed more than 2,000 acres and spread smoke haze to Sydney. And then uh, finally, and this is absolutely tragic, I just I find this really hard to take, kangaroos starving to death in the central west Queensland drought but showers off a brief respite. Now oh, they always have some good news, don't they? Uh, this, the drought in central west Queensland has left skin and bone kangaroos starving to death and too weak to move. Um, yeah, the workers who remove dead kangaroos hit by cars or trucks on roads around Ilfracombe now say the 
job now includes removing animals that have died around the town. Many residents have reported that kangaroos around the town are weak and lacking energy. Uh, and then they just sort of say, uh, although overnight rain might might provide some uh, short-term relief. So, uh, yeah, to starvation and heat. So, anyway, uh, yeah, so it's hitting us down under. And I would say Australia in the next few months is going to be the place to uh, to watch. Uh, so this is uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from down under.